What's up guys? In today's video we're going to talk about the transmission for this type of washer. This type of washer will be usually called a, I think, VMW or Paul's Play because of the little gray Paul's Play button will be in the corner and the six lights. But we're going to talk about the transmission for it, mainly today the bearings. This transmission is sealed, but I have gone through and unsealed it. And I'm doing this because I get tons of questions with people asking, is it possible just to change out the two bearings instead of the entire transmission because the transmission is expensive? So I'm going to give you that answer today. And uh, another symptoms of this problem would be a loud noise when it's in, especially spin, or if you've replaced the suspension rods and it's still wanting to shake. And sometimes I've seen machines where the bearings are going out and you can look over the top and see that the machine is not actually spinning in a circle. It's very off center or it's loose and you can feel the bearings are loose. Those are all signs that the bearings are bad. In today's video, we're gonna go over that right now. Before we get started guys, if you need any parts for your machines, I'll show you at the very end of this video how to use your model number found right here to make sure the part's going to fit your machine. Just go to this minute mark. Also guys, please use the affiliate links listed in the description below. It really helps the channel. All right guys, before we get started, tools we'll need, drill with a quarter inch, a quarter inch socket driver for these screws that are gonna be inside there. And a little, uh, anything sharp, a sharp screwdriver. I like these little key tools they sell at Harbor Freight. But also before we get started, my personal opinion, because I don't want anybody to go through all this video and uh, realize my opinion at the end of this, is that the bearings are not replaceable, but I will break it down and see if you guys think the exact same thing. Let me know what you think in the description below. I personally don't think they are, but we're gonna break it all the way down and let you look for yourselves. All right, so I drilled these out. I think there are four on this side, there were four on this side, two in the back, and then you have to drill two more here. After you drill those out, there's a piece of metal that this was holding up, and I like to bend that down, and that piece of metal is right there. This is normally up. I had to bend that down. The next thing you have to do is undo the screws. When you look straight down these holes, you'll see that there's four screws that line up. Undo those four screws, and when you give it a quarter turn, you'll see there's four more screws up here. There's eight screws in all on top of that transmission. These are the screws. They have sealant on all of them, so they're fairly snug in there. And after you get them all the way out, you kind of have to just push them with a screwdriver to get them out of the way and make them fall out of place. But you'll also notice when you're done, get all eight screws out, that it will still be stuck together. And I've already done this machine. I'll show you what's going on here. All right, there is, oh, by the way, I did this so it'd sit flat. Normally there's the bottom of the transmission. There is a major amount of sealant here and it is stuck may very firmly to this bottom portion. So the reason I bent this piece down earlier is so you can get a flat head and pop that off. Just slowly turn this transmission and keep popping it and eventually it'll just kind of release. After that, it will just come up. These four rods go in these four holes. All right, after you take that off, we're to the point where we can start getting to bearings. Now this will be full of oil. It has about two ounces of oil in it. When I opened it up, I was holding it a little bit sideways and it fell out. So definitely want to have it up and down when you pop that open. All right, there's one bearing right here and there's one bearing under here. The bearing underneath will be the more difficult one in my opinion. It will be sitting just like this. This will be going through it. That is a weird little guy and it goes, it's this little thing right here. And it's just a flat piece and it goes in this tray and that releases the bottom. So before you go to take that off, you have to take off this keeper. That's what I was using this guy for. You just kind of reach up underneath it and work your way all the way around. Let's see if I can get it to open just like that. And then eventually work it all the way around and pull it off of this plastic lip. And then you can just pull this piece off so you can start beating this bearing back off of there. And you'll have to pull this piece off it will just be very snugly on there and then flip this over and I took a large socket and sat it on top and took a hammer and gave it a good straight down hit. It took a lot of force to make this pop out, but it will eventually pop out. 
if you put a little bit of WD-40 around it and leave it for about 20 minutes and then WD-40 again and then hit it, it might make it a lot easier on your life. But afterwards, that will just fall out. It just fits in there snugly. It's not welded in. It's just snugly in there. And here is the first bearing. I would definitely say the bottom bearing is easily, if you want to call this much work, easily replaceable. Uh, this bearing number is 6006-2RS. And on the other side, it says B as in boy, H as in Henry. All right, so there's one bearing. Here comes the problem. Here's the where I say you may not be able to do this. Get this bearing out. After you get that off of there, this bearing's the problem. And the issue is whenever you take the, every transmission I've ever taken apart will always have rust. This is where water is going up and down, up and down, and it'll always rust here. This neck, I I'm, I'm, don't think it's just rusted in place. I tried for a while to loosen this up. It did not loosen up. I could not get it off. It may be glued, it may be welded in place, but it is there. And it may be in the factory they made it and measured it out to be the perfect spot to go in this transmission because it has to be right there and that's the only thing holding in place. And I can see there's a weld all the way around this on the bottom. You can see the beginning of the weld right here. There's a weld right here that runs around. It could be that they're running the bearing up from the bottom against this and then it's machined afterwards and welded shut onto that bearing because it is some kind of seriously on there. Um, you may have better luck with a machine that you have that doesn't have any rust on it at all, but more than likely, if you have bearings going out, I'm gonna guess you probably have the same problem I have, and it's gonna be rust. But here's where I'm pretty much saying end of the game is happening, is this bearing being able to be re replaced is very, very unlikely. But there's where we are guys uh this is just on the bearing i will talk about the issue that a lot of people run into with this transmission that's oil leaking down onto the ground and uh i'll do a video on that very soon spoiler alert i don't think that's fixable either so uh please uh help share this video let people know these what the deal is with these transmissions i know there's a lot of people that uh get very discouraged because you have to order the whole transmission in the back of their brain they're always thinking maybe i could replace something maybe i could have fixed it uh i would say don't be disappointed you didn't waste your money you can't fix it these are horribly made machines these are not like the old whirlpool style direct drive machines that you could fix anything and everything on that these bearings to start with are where they are is outrageously ridiculous. Bearings should be easily accessible to be able to replace. Bearings just go out and things every once in a while. This is crazy that they not only buried them this deep in the machine, but they did this to pretty much make it so you can't replace the bearing. So super disappointed in this type of machine, but again, don't dislike the video, dislike the machine. Uh, please like, please subscribe, and please share this video if it, you know you guys, it's repair guys. This is the only video, I, I haven't seen one, y'all let me know, that I've ever seen where anyone broke down the machine and broke down all the way to this point to show you how it works. And I'll also do another video on exactly, actually when this machine's working, the transmission's actually pretty n interestingly simple. But when it's not working, it's a pain. But I'll do a lot more videos on this very soon. Please like, please subscribe. We'll see y'all next time. All right, guys, here's a real quick clip on how to make sure you're looking up the right parts for your machine. All right, guys, so here's Appliance Parts Pros. I linked them in the description and below. Just click that link, and you'll see this search bar that I got you linked to. And all you have to do is type in the model number of your washer or dryer, whatever appliance you're looking up that you want to find the part number for whatever you're looking for. So all you have to do is open the door of your appliance, and it should be a sticker somewhere inside there that says model number or mod number all right so take that here's one i'm going to put in and i'm going to search for it just click search and then right here you get these charts that come up this is super handy these charts are every single part that's in that appliance so let's say i want to find the filter for this particular dryer all right 
uh, I can see the filter is right there, number seven. So now I'm just going to pan down the page until I get to part number seven, and boom, there it is. There's the part number, but also you can take that part number if you don't like this website. They do have a one-year warranty and technical support and all that. That's nice, but sometimes people would rather use Amazon. I also have my Amazon link. Please use that. It really helps the channel. But another thing you can do is click on the dryer lint filter, pan down a little bit, and you'll see these other reference numbers. Really handy. There's different numbers for the exact same part. So now you know exactly which part you're looking for. You don't have to worry about finding my, and sometimes I'll be showing you a part and it'll be slightly different from one year mate to the, to another. So you, it's a good way to double check things. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video and please like, please subscribe. It really helps the channel.